please stand as you are able and let us pray. For God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully rule and direct our hearts in this service and in all things. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. To him, in your purple hymnals 299-299, ye servants of God, your master proclaim. Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would lead me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever, for whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 48 responsibly by the half verse, as shown in your bulletin. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised. Beautiful and lofty, the joy of all the earth is the hill of Zion. God is in her citadels. Behold, the kings of the earth assembled. They looked and were astounded. Trembling seized them there. As we have heard, so have we seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God has established here We have waited in silence on your loving kindness, O God. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice. Because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion walk round about her. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds. That he may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our God forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bike, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, <coughs> wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent, he cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many who were sick, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to your God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. How do you handle rejection? The loss of influence. I mean, has anybody here been rejected before? Anybody here experienced rejection? I'm sure we all have. Maybe you felt a sense of rejection the first time your child no longer wanted you to help them or needed your advice. You know what that feels like, right? Or maybe you were at the receiving end, Luke, of, it's not me, it's not you, it's me, rather. <laughs> anybody ever heard that before? Maybe I've used that a couple of times. Or maybe you were ghosted by someone. You keep calling the young lady, John, and she doesn't pick up the phone. All of a sudden, she disappears. Oh, your wife? No, 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 no. <laughs> Sometimes we feel rejected. Maybe you had critical parents, never quite measuring up to the perfect older or high-achieving sibling. You feel out of place. Or you experienced being bullied or left out by your peers. See, sometimes we can feel cast aside or experience a keen sense of rejection because of our age, sexual orientation, our skin color, our socioeconomic status, or because we are different from the status quo, what some might call socially awkward. But the reality is we all feel rejection when we are not included, when we lose our influence or when others give us a cold shoulder. And truth be told, no matter the kind of rejection, no matter the circumstance, rejection can be painful. Rejection is hard. It eats at the soul, even a soul already saved. Even if you thought rejection could happen, it can still be a shock, a punch in the gut, because rejection inevitably is about loss. And loss causes grief. The hardest part 
of existence is loss. When we are rejected, it's hard not to think that you're not good enough, that you've done something wrong, that you've messed up in some way, even though you're not sure what that might be. See, rejection often sets in motion a kind of unraveling, causing a questioning of the self. We go on a hunt for validation, so much so that when we are rejected or don't feel loved, as Johnny Lee said, we go looking for love in all, all the wrong places. You know your music. Rejection is hard. You would agree, Hannah? And Jesus knows that. And so Mark includes an experience in which Jesus himself was rejected. And it gives us food for thought. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus enters his own hometown, but not to a warm, welcoming reception. And I wonder, if Jesus were to enter your home, would he feel accepted or rejected? If Jesus were to walk into this church this morning, what might he feel? Rejection or acceptance? Regardless of the circumstance, Jesus goes home. And he does some amazing things. And guess what? The people recognize it. And they say, wow, what amazing things has he done? But they take offense. It's the kind of experience when you go away or you move out of your neighborhood. You might purchase a bigger home. You start doing well for yourself. And you visit your family back home. And all of a sudden, the people around you start saying, well, who do you think you are? Got that big time job, huh, Mike? All of a sudden you think you're better than us. That's what happened. But I don't know why they rejected Jesus. One can only deduce. Did they think he was crazy? Did they think that his power was satanic? That he thought he was better than them? Did you realize in this passage that there is no mention of a father? Is not this the son of Mary and the brother of Joseph? And are his sisters not among us? And in fact, if you read into the text, it could be an insult. Because in a status society, he was considered illegitimate. And how dare you, when you don't know who your father is, talk to us with this kind of authority? Do you get the drift? Something is wrong with anyone who needs to bring others down to make themselves look good. That seems to be happening in the gospel today. And the fact that they recognized that Jesus was doing good works, but they still rejected him and gave no reason for the rejection, lets me know that any experience of rejection, at least I believe, is more about the person doing the rejection than the one being rejected. In the gospel, People we expect to grasp and support Jesus are those who don't. You ever had that experience? The people you expect to be in your corner are sometimes the ones who reject you, who don't support you. I remember my first year in college. My buddy, he lucky we're still friends today. I had no expectations, but some of my older friends from Bahamas came, which is in seminary, and said, hey, why don't you run for this position as part of the student body? It's like, me, no, I don't know anything, blah, blah, blah. But they coaxed me and they coaxed me, and finally I did. And my best friend at the time said nothing to me, but he voted against me. <laughs> and then had the heart afterwards to say, yeah, I didn't vote for you because we're just entering this college and I don't think you really know anything about it. I said, it's best you leave. And I made the sign of the cross. <laughs> but it was a good thing. And I understood his point later, not in the moment. The point is, sometimes we think we get support, but we don't. 
And so it was a shock to Jesus that the people he thought would be proud of him and all that he was doing brought him down. Who do you think you are? They sized him up. And in the face of this rejection, Jesus designates himself as a prophet without honor in his hometown. He is aligning himself with a lineage of countercultural figures in Israel. And so for Mark's gospel, he's affirming his identity as one sent by God. That's the first thing. But he's reminding us also that not everybody will be receptive to God's will. Sometimes we're not receptive to God's will. And so as a Christian, we can expect rejection. So what does he do? He moves on. And he goes into the other villages, he teaches, then he calls the 12 disciples and send them out. And they were very successful in casting out demons and healing people. Rejection from familiar people in Nazareth sits in contrast to the hospitality from strangers. See that? Mark likes to sandwich stories together. And it is this juxtaposition, this contrast, that is a key reminder that Jesus will do his thing, whether or not it matches or meets our expectations. Let that sink in. God is going to do God's thing, whether we agree or not. And you know, sometimes, you know, this is very humbling for me because sometimes I'm like, well, I'm not doing it. I say, okay, I'll get someone else to do it. I remember being asked to be a part of the school play. And I took the role, but then after two days, I went back to my sixth grade teacher and I said, Mrs. Black, I really don't want to do this. And this black got mad. She said, and I fought for you, and I wanted you to have this part. And I said, well, Ms. Black, I didn't. And you know what Ms. Black did after they had the play? And I sat in the congregation. I watched my friend uh, take the part on, and he did well. And then she threw a party for everyone that was in the play. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to get you back, Mrs. Black. No, no, no. <laughs> But the point I'm making is sometimes we think we're doing God some sort of injury by saying, I'm going to withhold, and somehow God finds another way of getting the task accomplished. So, dear friends, opposition to the reign of God sometimes takes a toll and may have lasting consequences. But what I've learned from this passage is that it never has the last word. God always has the final say. Where do you feel opposed in your life? Where do you feel rejected or resisted because of your values, because of your standards, because of your way of being, because of what you want to offer? The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. God always has the final say. So this narrative, I thought, left us with much food for thought. And three points, as usual. First, how do we handle rejection? I believe Jesus gives us some insights, Steve. First of all, he interprets rejection as part of the prophet's job description. He puts rejection in context. In other words, he calls us to accept the fact that not everybody will accept us. Ain't that for sure? Yeah. Not everybody will accept us. And so part of coping is accepting that reality. There has always been and will always be resistance to the true power of God's love. And sometimes we will fail in our attempts to be effective Christians, to love others, to connect with others. You can please some of the people some of the time. You cannot please all of the people all of the time. So the sooner we accept that, I was at a gathering yesterday and the guys were amazed, but I said, no, pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. And suffering happens because of the lies we tell ourselves. Oh, he loves me, but he's never home. 
He loves me, but he doesn't contribute to anything in the house. And then you sit, cry to yourself. I don't know what I did wrong because of the lies you told yourself. We have to be real and accept the fact that not everybody will like us. You can love people, but not everybody's going to like the way I do things. Do you like everybody's cooking? No. You, there you go. I certainly don't. But you smile and say, oh, this tastes really good. No, no, you don't lie. <laughs> so accept the fact that not everybody will like us. Despite the fact that this was par for the course, Jesus decided to continue God's mission. In other words, he trusted God and he recognized that he needed to please God above others. That's how we deal with rejection. But remember, rejection can also be an opportunity for a new start. If you were to take a wrong turn down a dark, dead-end street pyramid, would you sit in your car, analyze the mechanics, the high beams, engage in a conversation with your GPS? No. You would likely make a quick adjustment, turn around as fast as possible, and get back on track. But maybe Kieran would. But we would get back on track. <laughs> Adopt the same strategy for dealing with rejection. It's an opportunity. And remember, sometimes when one door closes, another opens. I have learned that when the door doesn't open, it's not for me. Doesn't mean I don't get hurt or feel bad or upset or angry. But I recognize that it's not for me. And so when people don't want you to be a part of their circle, accept it. That's not the friend group for me. Jesus reminded the disciples also that they are resilient. When people reject you, shake the dust off your feet and move away. Never forget that we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors, says Paul. We are resilient. We can bounce back. This experience will not last forever. You remember the first time or before you met Joan, the young lady rejected you? Right. And then because she rejected you, you met Joan, the love of your life. <laughs> rejection is an opportunity and it makes us resilient. But also in the face of rejection, focus on the positive. Jesus decided to focus on other things. How many times we get stuck on focusing on the thing that didn't happen? Oh my gosh. You, even when you take your report card to your parents, well, why did you get a C in this? You have all A's. Or maybe I'm getting a little too personal. Um, what I'm saying is, <laughs> focus on the positive. What's the positive nugget in it all? But also, here's the greatest thing in dealing with rejection. Recognize that there are some things you just can't control. Focus on that which you can control. Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. He could not control their belief system. And he recognized that. But above all, remember, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Rejection is a perfect time to grow your spiritual muscles. So Paul, in the first lesson that Todd read, said, with this power in me, even when I am weak, I am strong. When all else fails, I believe that Jesus can help us get it back together. He, re he was rejected. He went on with the disciples and he helped them to be successful. So how do we cope with rejection? Remember, with God, all things are possible. And that God always has a greater purpose for us and for our lives. And God's plan never fails. The second thing I would like us to focus on is to think about ways in which we might reject God. I know we look at the past and we say, his own people rejected him. But how different are we from Jesus' homeboys and girls? When and how do we attack the character of Jesus? When have we, accused, have we accused Jesus of being less than the God we expect? I thought you were savior of all. Why am I still going through this? Lord. And so we reject God's way sometimes. Because God's way is not always the easy way. 
When has it been hard for God to do work in our lives because of our own resistance? What causes us to resist the work of God in our lives? Is familiarity also a way in which we reject Jesus? We have a saying and the adage, perhaps you know it, right? That familiarity breeds contempt. You've heard that before? Sometimes our own familiarity with God and God's ways causes us to resist God. Case in point, personally, sometimes I'm studying and reading and I can see the lessons ahead for the Sundays and I thought, oh, I've preached on that a thousand times. And I have one narrative in my head about what that text is saying. And so I'm resisting new inspiration, resisting new revelation from God because I'm so familiar with it. This passage calls us not to become so familiar that we get laxed and start rejecting God's new directions in our lives. Finally, this passage reminds us that when we are faced with rejection, remember whose you are and your identity. That our success as Christians, as people in this world, are not rooted in what others think. One of the key ingredients for anxiety is to constantly worry about what other people think of you. You can never be settled or at ease because you're always wondering, what are they thinking? As if we can read people's minds. Now I'm not saying that's not going to occur, but when you stew in it, when you sit in it, everything you do, it's like, how are people gonna receive this? What are they going to think? Listen, after the first year of sermons, high and lows and all kinds of comments, I learned, God, what they receive is what they're going to receive. Just let it be of you. <laughs> because if I'm worried about how people are going to receive this and what they're going to say, I will be an anxious wreck every time I get up here. And then it would be of me and not of God. Jesus gave the disciples authority to do the work of God. Remember, our identity, our authority is rooted and grounded in God. And so success in ministry, success in the church is not dependent on others. It's dependent on our faithfulness to God. In other words, it's not about what others do, but how we respond. And so a lot of times people would say to me, but you don't know what she did. And how did you respond? And how did you respond? They rejected Jesus, but that was no excuse for him to give up. He went on continuing the mission of God. Understand, dear friends, people will reject you. People will undermine you. But it is upon us to do the right thing. My mom used to say, two wrongs, man, you all know this, <laughs> right? That's no excuse. But you don't know the kind of teacher she was, mommy. Did I send you to school to assess the teacher? <laughs> it doesn't matter. She has a degree, right? These are kind of messages. My mom is a really loving, sweet woman. Don't mind me. <laughs> These are just some of the high key lessons I took with me growing up, as my siblings did. Maybe keep these points in mind then. Rejection is a part of life. We can overcome, we can deal with it. It will hurt, but we can overcome. Pay attention to how we reject God. But in the face of rejection, and when we are tempted to reject God, remember our true identity. We are dust, and to dust we shall return. Keep us humble from rejecting God. But also when others reject us, remember we are loved by God. And we've been given God's stamp of approval to do this work. Amen. Let us stand now and reaffirm our faith. The words of the Nicene Creed, page 358. 
358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, today are form three found on page 387 of the book of common prayer father we pray for your holy catholic church grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you may be glorified by all people we pray for all bishops priests and deacons we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our work may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the safety for Alex Reeves, Rowan Walsh, and all those who serve in the armed forces that protect our country. Please add your own petitions, either silently or loud. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have acted faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Having made peace with God, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us share in peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank mm -hmm. you.
161 degrees flank security. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Tonight, he was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this be asked through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our and Father, who art in heaven, now is our name.
Hallelujah. Christ at Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. remembrance of Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the post communion prayer, page 365. Together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacraments of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. have enough time to gladden the hearts of those around us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and proclaim the gospel at all times using words only if necessary. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Thank you.